Hello, welcome back. How to D&D, how to D&D, no, how to RPG, how to RPG. I'm all about role-playing games. Today it's character building. Uh, before you, you see Esper's Emporium of Esoterica. We're going to be doing some character building with his monstrous heroes today and the Star Wars role-playing game, which we'll come back to uh, at some point. You will need dice today. I will make it clear you definitely need dice. So I've brought some dice along. Um, I would like you to do the dice rolling if possible rather than me. Um, and I'm going to put up a poll just to make sure that you've got something to interact with, ask a few questions, stuff like that. Uh, you will need to use the chat, so you definitely want to be subscribed if you haven't subscribed, so that you can actually take part in, uh, in the discussion, because I get the audience to do the character building. How's it going, Noroak? Noroak is a patron. Thank you for coming. All right, sounds like we are ready to just about move along. <clears throat> I want to um, pl um, plow through this fairly quickly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a a presentation and then once I've done the presentation I'm going to move on and then we're going to do the character building so yes you'll uh, you'll find everything you need down in the description uh, and I thought it would be nice to sort of do it together because character building together is fun <laughs> it is it is fun anyway let's uh, rock on over to the appropriate screen and I should be ready to go and uh, that is there Yes, make sure you have your dice goblins ready. Absolutely. Okay, let's make this work. Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about role playing games. We're going to make a character. That's right, we're going to build a character. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a presentation and explain the process of building a character first, and then we'll build a character together. Okay, I'll make this quick if I can, because I've gone through this quite a few times before. Um, so character creation pre-check. When you're doing your character, there's some things you need to do before you start building your character, and that is check with the game master or dungeon master what player character options are available for your game that's being run. What house rules does the game master have? For character creation and playing the game because they will affect how you play the game okay uh, build a character for the campaign on the information provided by your game master or dungeon master and if they don't provide you enough information to build a character to fit the adventure or campaign then ask for relevant details to allow you to do so okay it is much easier to build for you to build a character to fit the adventure and the premise behind the adventure and campaign rather than to have four or five people trying to build different characters that then the um, dungeon master or game master has to try to pull together into a story which will have to make off up on the fly or adjust heavily so uh, do them a favor that's the best way to do it is make the character fit the game not the other way around next character creation always starts as a group discussion because a character is part of a team it is part of a group machine. You're essentially, in many respects, playing a, a table sport. It's a team table sport game, right? Where you have a team, you work together. So this is why it's important to do your planning together, do your training together, and you play together. That's how team, teams work, okay? You don't go off and do your own thing. Now, you can do research, of course, in your own time, away from the group. That's, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But the final process should be happening together so that you actually make a character that will mesh with everybody else. Okay, design characters around all aspects of play. So that's exploration, investigation, discovery, you know, and exploring your environment. Uh, any kind of communication. So if you wanna to talk to anything, you really need to be able to talk to them. So make sure you build a character capable of doing so. Now that doesn't mean that you need to have maxed out all of the uh, skills, if there are skills involved in deception, persuasion, intimidation, influence or whatever the heck they call it okay uh, you don't <clears throat> you want to make sure your character can cope with dealing with combat because there's probably going to be some fighting involved at some point whatever game system you're playing so make sure you can do all three one trick ponies aren't much fun it means two-thirds of the time you're not doing anything while everybody else is engaged and so make your character so it can actually do something most of the time Ask what ability or attribute score method is being used and when. So are you using a point by system, standard array or some other system, depending on what you're playing, or you're rolling dice. And if you're rolling dice, make sure you do it in front of the group, in front of the game master. Okay, always my advice to you. That way you can't be accused of cheating. We don't want to be accused of cheating. We want to be accused of doing things the right way. <laughs> okay, so yes, do it in front of the game master. 
determine what hit point or health point method is being used and when. So are you using maximum hit points? Are you using average? Are you going to be rolling? And if you're rolling, do it again in front of the game master and group so they can see what's going on. Don't do it at home on the desk and suddenly you rolled 18s for everything. That would be a very, very dubious situation. So don't do that. Character sheet format. There's about four different uh, formats that you can use for a character sheet. That is the standard paper character sheet with pen and pencil. I would suggest pencil over pen because you can rub it out and you'll probably be changing things. Uh, you can also go with the fillable PDF character sheet. They're quite common nowadays and if, they, if you don't have one you'll probably find, you, find one has been made somewhere on the internet that you can download for whatever game system you're playing. And you just fill in the details and then print it out and you can also have it digitally on your phone or um, on your computer which is quite handy. Computer software. Uh, and website character builders. Not all systems have this, but if you do have access to one, it's quite handy to be able to build it online with a whatever system you're, you, you're preferring. All right. Smartphone applications. They have character builders for a lot of different systems. You just got to find them. And uh, this is like the, the most portable and easy way to deal with things. I will advise you though, if you're going to use a smartphone to build your character and store your character or software on a computer, make sure you have a paper copy just in case your technology fails you so you can still play the game. All right. Character creation basics. Uh, select the level for your character that you're starting at and write it down on the character sheet. Now the game master will explain what character level you're starting at because not every single game starts at level 1. Sometimes you'll start at level 0 which be, basically means you're probably not a hero, you're just like a, a little pinion. And you know, you're, a, you're a little, uh, little commoner, you, you're just starting out, you have not even done your training yet. Or you might be starting at level 3 or level 5 or even higher so you might be a bit more experienced. Most games will start at level 1, but you still need to check with your game master what level you need to build the character for. Okay, uh, select the class or career path or the heroic class or the, the character type for your character and write down the relevant details on your character sheet. Uh, select the species, race or playable monster and we're going to be building a playable monster today. Uh, write that on your character sheet with all of its relevant details if you can fit them in. Uh, select the background aspects for your character if that applies, okay? Write a rele relevant details on the character sheet. Now, this might include, but does not have to, a backstory. And I would say a short backstory in narrative form. So maybe a paragraph or two paragraphs or a couple of sentences. Usually there's only four or five questions that most game masters need you to answer. And if you do that, okay, you probably covered all your bases. Now, you don't need to write a backstory uh, initially for a character because there is another way of doing this and that is to, to look at the the first levels of your character as the, the backstory. Like so level 1 to level 4, you know, as you play from level 1 to level 4, that is your backstory. You're forming it as you play the game. It gives you maximum flexibility by not actually building a backstory in a lot of detail. You might Your backstory might be simply be you're a farmer and then the rest of it goes from there. You actually have to play out that process. Particularly if you're playing a zero level character that has no heroic levels. It's just about your farmer surviving. Will your farmer survive this encounter um, or situation or adventure and move on and become a full blown hero? Yeah? Or at least the first part of that hero's journey. Okay, select the character um, uh, customization stuff. So when you're ca um, building a character, a lot of modern games and other um, old school games, they might have had some sort of customization in the form of feats, talents, traits, skills, and other features that you can put into your character. You need to check with your um, game master or dungeon master what those might be, but those are things that you want to sort of add in as well. Determine the character's ability or attribute scores. So I was talking about ability scores and attribute scores before and what method are you going to use. This is where you start doing that. Okay, You're going to actually roll the dice or calculate it by using the maximum or using the average or whatever it is that they've decided you're going to use. Okay, Determine that method where you go. Get that all down. Right, advanced details on a character sheet. Uh, these will be things like 
selecting your powers if you have powers to select if you're playing a superhero game you might have stunts or powers to select if you are playing a fantasy game and you're a spellcaster or a magic user then you'll have spells to select for your character uh, make sure you pick out the ones that are appropriate write them down on your character sheet okay select and buy equipment for your character uh, write down that on your character sheet. I'm going to say this a lot, okay? <laughs> Don't just select, you've got to remember to write it down on the character sheet. Now, most game systems have uh, the option to select some pre-existing packages. So do that. And then, if you have any money, go and buy some additional stuff. Uh, particularly if the option is available. And usually it is. It's, it's usually something you can do with any character. It doesn't matter who you are. There's usually still a little bit of money to spend. Um, calculate bonuses, your modifiers for your character, all of the number crunching, mathematics stuff, you know the scary stuff? Yeah, get that all done. Uh, select or draw a character portrait. It's not vital, but it does help connect the concept of your um, character that's in your imagination to a physical medium, such as a piece of paper or a digital file or whatever it is. Now I usually give out some miscellaneous recommendations when I'm doing anything like this and so my miscellaneous recommendations are these. All character options are customizable, okay? They can all be customized. You can make your own, you can adjust it. You just need to have Game Master approval. That doesn't mean you go and harass them like a child doing this. What you do is you go and ask them like a mature person and you say, look, is this an option? And if they say, great, yes, you can make adjustments, just Put it together and show me and explain to me what you want to do. That's that's the way you normally do it when you want to customize a character, okay, and change things around. A lot of systems have a lot of customization built in already. Okay, character options don't need to be optimized for a role-playing game, okay? They don't have to be just revolving around combat. So feel free to make a character that is suboptimal. It is not necessary to make everything completely optimized for a particular aspect of the game. I know some people like doing that. You don't have to do it that way. Okay, it's perfectly legitimate to make a character that isn't quite the perfect way of building something. Okay, that will give you the maximum amount of damage and hit the most amount of times and have the best chance of succeeding on a dice roll to, to perform something. You don't have to necessarily do that. Okay, select your adventuring gear. It's easy for any player character to do. I've already said this. I'm going to make a point of pointing this out. It is actually really important. I actually made a whole lot of videos. There's a whole series of videos explaining how to use mundane equipment in your adventures, in your role-playing game adventures, how you can actually apply them. They help you prepare for the adventure, and they will help you solve problems during your adventure when you face challenges and threats. So go get some adventuring gear, okay? Rope is probably the first thing on your list. And if it's not rope, maybe it's a string line of some kind, all right? Maybe you have um, uh, a tensile wire or I don't know what it is. But anything that you can tie something up with and you can climb with is a good thing. Note down the page number in, of the, the role-playing game book. Okay, you'll find almost all the stuff that you have for, you, for your character. In the book, there'll be a page number. So for your powers... All the descriptions around your powers, note down the page number on your character sheet beside the power. Note down the page number for the um, the spell descriptions, because spell descriptions are quite complicated. Uh, your race and species abilities, write down that page number. Your character type or class, write down the page number where the ability is. And if you've got background features or anything else, write down the page number. Now why? One, it makes it easy for you to reference everything. Okay, so you don't get stuck and don't look like an idiot. Two, if your game master or dungeon master is not sure how that function or character ability works, you can refer them to the page number and it's easy for them to look up if they want to look it up. That's really the, the key behind all of this. It's about making sure everybody's job and task at the table is as easy to perform as possible. And if you do that, it's all going to be good. Now I'm hoping that this was useful to you and if it was, fantastic. Um, I want to thank my patrons and everybody who's watching. Thank you very much and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, all right, let's, um, let's, let's rock on in. <clears throat> uh, right, now just... Um,
I had a package just arrive at my door just now, by the way, people. I don't know what it is. I haven't even looked at it. I haven't had time. Literally, the stream was about to start in about two minutes, so I had to, I had to go. So there is a package sitting behind me. I don't know what's in it exactly. There's been so many things being sent to me. I have no idea what anything is nowadays. Um, so, so maybe we'll maybe we'll open that on Friday, or maybe I'll open it sooner. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I want to say, yeah, hey, hi, Nor Noroak. Noroak is a patron. Um, all the patrons really do support this program continuing because this does not get a lot of traffic. These these live streams do not get a lot of traffic. Uh, as the, I'll also point out this will be the last time for quite some time while that we'll be going over 5e character creation of any time. I mean, Esper's stuff is not Wizards of the Coast, granted. But... Um, we're going to be looking at a few other different game systems coming up. Okay, so yeah. Yes, if I if I if I if it explodes, that's a problem. Hi, prepare, cook, and survive. How are you, Fred Hubber? Hello, how are you? If you're using electronic um, PC management, don't watch laugh cats during the game. I don't know what that means. Okay, how's it going, Dungeons and Chronics? Hello. You guys got all your dice warmed up, I hope, because I'm going to be having having you rolling dice very shortly. You do realize this, right? Um, everybody's saying hi to each other, I can see here. Live unboxing. Open it. Tick, tick, boom. You guys want me to open the box right now? Are we supposed to be building character? Um, I mean, I suppose I can. If you insist, I'll open the box. Let's just see. Have you ever wanted to play a spider creature um, character? Yes. This is, I mean, if you didn't click this on, you didn't want to play a spider character, I don't know what was going on in your mind. <laughs> no, it's 20%. Those people have already left. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, flames, eh? Uh, yeah. Right, let me just um, update my screen here. So we're dealing with monstrous heroes today. And if I can just find the appropriate, yep, this is what I want. Sweet, that's good. What have I, what have I missed here? Nacho Nacho Man, also a patron. Thank you for coming. Nice to have you. Uh, what else? If I got that ready, I think I do. I need to grab. I don't know what you guys are saying here. Search YouTube for low cats meant don't uh, do stuff other than pay attention to the game. Ah, I see. You getting your bag of dice? Right. Good, good, good. Hey, Nacho. All right. Okay. Let's, um, because we always, I always wind up running out of time with these. So let's make sure that I just get started on this, uh, this process fairly quickly. So this is looking all right. There we go. And oh, I'm going to open the door because it's didn't get warm again. It's a warm, it's a warm day. Yeah, this is this is the this is the package that got sent to me. Um, but yeah, we've we've got uh, work to do. We've got dice to roll, people. Let's get this done. Um, so yes, more interesting stuff to show off later on, for sure, for sure. So, phone. My gosh, there is so many things coming through here. Um, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, and where is it? There it is, okay. Just pulling up the chat. Okay, we're here. Sweet. Right. Um, I think it's probably a good idea uh, for me to just quickly go over this. But uh, what I want to do is I want to get you rolling dice as soon as possible. So warm up those six-sided dice. You will need four six-sided dice, people. Four six-sided dice. <clears throat> I have my character sheet ready to go. I've got this. But um, so hashtag. Oh, they're already rolling. Hashtag. Uh, roll four, um, six sided dice. Don't give me the total value. Make sure to give me the actual dice numbers, okay? 
Rocking chair, do I need a rocking chair? Maybe. So Fred Hubbard's already given me the numbers. This is how you do it. Roll four dice, write down the numbers, six, four, three, two. That's the first set. Okay, so while he's doing that, I will scroll you down and show you Monstrous Heroes. Now, you'll find the um, the preview for this, for Esper's um, Kickstarter, is down in the description, so you can access that. We've already done the Minotaur, so I will scroll uh, sweet, sweet, sweet down, sweet down, 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 down. Uh, the, uh, the, here we go, here it is. This is the Arachna. This is basically you're playing a monstrous woman with eight spider legs. Yes, you're, you are playing Loth. Or are you, are you playing a, um, a drider? It, it, it just feels like you, we're playing a drider, aren't we? It's the spider creature. Terrifying. Look at this thing. So it is structured like any 5e character. You can see we're going to build a level 5 character today. today. Rather than a lower level character, we're going to build a five, level, um, 5 levels into this little thing. Um, it's got a bunch of information here. Got how racial now it's it's a race and a class as I've mentioned before. He there is no there is no power gaming uh, finding the loopholes on this one. This is all built together. So you if you when you're playing the class you're playing the race as well. It's all part and parcel. Okay, there's a lot going on here, and um, we will be going over most of this. So this is this is to give you an idea of what it is. I'm not going to talk over talk about the different features just yet. What I want to do is instead, you can play a spell casting one. We've done the ogre already. So there is a, um, a Rachno Mansur, which is your spell casting um, arachnid. And uh, then we also have a, a couple of others, which we'll go over very shortly. Okay. Dice rolling has begun. I see. So I need to start filling in my character sheet while you guys get the numbers. How many? I need six cents of numbers. One, two, three, four, five. One more set of numbers, people, and I'm going to start. Oh, that's done. Okay, so I didn't get that far. <laughs> All right, so. Arachnia. Arachnia. It's a race. Arachnia. Uh, level five. Um, and let's just note down these numbers that you've given me. So I've decided since um, I... I we always run late on these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got more than enough sets of numbers now. What I want to do is the following. It's going to get you to do another task while I'm doing this. Okay. So if I quickly look at the hit points, I'm going to get you to roll the hit points as well. So let me just check to see what the hit points are for this, this sucker. And that's not the one. Oh, um... Okay, interesting. So we'll do the assigning shortly, but... <clears throat> okay, here we go. So you get a hit dice, is a 1d8 for your Acnea level. <clears throat> that means we'll get maximum hit point, um, maximum hit points at level 1, and after that you'll be rolling a 8-sided dice. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hashtag roll 1... Sorry about my voice, people. 1, um, 8... 8-sided... Eight dice for hit points okay I'm going to let you guys start rolling that <clears throat> oh my gosh hit points and that's level 1 2 uh, 3 4 and 5 and at level 1 <coughs> We get eight plus our con, so the rest will be dice rolled. Thank you for doing that, Noroak. I appreciate it. All of you doing great today. Uh, now, let's just collect up these numbers while you're rolling that. So, Fred Hubbard, you got um, so one, two, three, four, five, six for our abilities. So, Fred, your first set of numbers was a six, a four a three and a two so we take the lowest number and we take that off we get rid of it so uh, six four three that's a 13 so that's six plus four plus three 13 so first one is done Noroak you well done you've got some nice low numbers there Noroak um, one three six and two so we drop the one 
cross that out. We keep the uh, the three, the two, and the six comes to eleven. It's eleven. It's a pretty good score, really. It's not a, a low score. Okay, next, uh, prepare cooks to survive. What have you got here? You got a five, three, three, and a one. Five, three, three. And a one, nothing particularly low today. Okay, so we crossed the one out, not using that one. Uh, and it comes out as five and six. That's so another 11. Uh, that's prepare, cook, and survive. Dungeons, Dungeons and Chronics, you have got five, five, two, and three. Drop the two, keep the fives, and the three comes to 10, 13. It's another 13. Okay, there's a bit of wind around, but I'm leaving all the doors open, people, so I don't go completely insane. Nacho Nacho Man, um, we're, I'm doing a review on your the Dungeon Master Guide you sent me, by the way, at the end of the week. You probably already know this, right? <laughs> uh, two. We've got a two, a four, a four, and a five. So drop the two, keeping the fours and the fives, so that comes out as eight. Uh, five is a 13. I think my or last number um, coming in from Noroak, I believe. Noroak got four, two, a one, two, and a four. Okay. Four, four, one, and two. Okay, good. So that comes out. We drop the one and we keep the two fours and the two so that comes to eight uh ten that's a pretty average score right okay so <clears throat> nothing super super high or fantastic there but that's fine that's not the end of the world right now hit points since you've already rolled them let me have a look at what we've got here noroak has got a five so that's for level two uh prepare cook and survive you got a four so we'll keep that one uh, Fred Hubba, you got a seven, or we'll keep that one. And Nacho Nacho Man, you got a four. Okay, all right. Uh, if I didn't take your number, don't worry about it. It's like you guys are just, you were nice, swift, and speedy. We got that done fast. Okay, so I'm going to start asking you some questions about where to assign stuff, and you're going to make some decisions about where to put things. We have... The last time I did this, this caused so much confusion for you. So I've decided I'm going to actually state all the numbers so you can see the array, okay? I'll also explain to you what um, ability score improvement you get for the Arachnia. So the Arachnia gets your strength increase by two and one other ability score of your choice you can increase by two. So you can increase your strength by two, that's built in, and you can increase one other Ability score by two. Is that clear? Okay, cool. Let me put give you the array that we've got. Hashtag um, ability scores rolled uh, are um, next. I need to make sure I put this in so it's easy for you to see. 13, 13, 13. The three of them, we've got two 11s and 10. I'm hoping that that helps you a little bit more in terms of doing this. Okay. Uh, make um, make as close to a bard as you can in honor of Espa. Well, you can if you want. I don't mind. Um... So I'm just going to give you a rough idea. It'll tell us here uh, what sort of ability scores you probably want to improve depending on the class you're trying to build. So I, I'm going to give you that now. Uh, where is this information? There's usually a section that says what you probably want to increase or whatever. And it's, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? He usually has a shortcut um, system in place for, okay. Preferable ability scores. To quickly make an arachnia, have dexterity be your highest ability score, okay? Followed by constitution. If you intend, so that's what he suggests you do. Go dexterity and constitution. If you intend to cast spells, and there's only one spellcaster as far as I can tell there, then you want to 
have um, wisdom or charisma be your impo- um, is more important. Does that make sense? That gives you a better idea of how you're going to go about building this, depending on what you want to do. Okay, so you want 10 in charisma, Norok. Okay, so um, hashtag what ability scores get a 13? Let's get the 13s assigned first. There are three 13s. I'll let you make those decisions. And I am going to punch in the appropriate information. Um, oh, you've, we also need to know which one of these is going to wind up getting the plus two. If your strength is already going to go up at some point, but we'll do that after. Let's assign everything first, okay? Uh, and I will do this. So around the age of 15, an arachnia reaches physical maturity. It is rare for an arachnia to live more than 100 years. Okay, so, um, interesting. Um, do we have age here? Age, 15. We'll just make it 15. Here you go, 15. That's the first thing we've done. Uh, how many levels? we got five. Um, we haven't done the character. I don't need to do that yet. This will be a plus, plus three. Proficiency is plus three. Yes, hasn't changed. He's used the same one. Um, typical alignments. Neutral evil, neutral. Arachnids vary quite a bit uh, on the law. Chaos axis of alignment with some that are impulsive wanderers, some that are dedicated community um, builders, and many that follow fall somewhere in between. On the good evil axis, the arachnia tends towards evil as they are often merciless, brutal, and inclined to the darker side of magic and religion. So he's he's kind of, he's given you some guidance around this. Typical just means typical, doesn't mean you need to do it that way, okay? You are a monster, you're monstrous, that is your type. Okay, some, some uh, decisions have occurred. Um... Inky, Inky the Drider. You try to name this Drider already. We'll name it. We'll name it shortly. Let's just get the, this side of things done. Um, getting you to name things is not the the priority. I just want to move this forward a little faster. Wisdom, intelligence, dexterity. Okay. Wisdom, intelligence, dexterity. Fred, that's what he said. Norak's gone with um, wisdom, dex, con. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to wait for somebody else to make a comment. Otherwise, I'm going to fill in some more details. Our size, you are large size, standing between 7 and 8 feet tall and weigh around 240 to 340 pounds. Uh, though your upper body is that of a medium-sized humanoid, your lower spider body is much bigger. Um, you wield the same size weapons as medium creatures. Okay, so you don't wield large weapons. Your base speed is 30, and you also have a climb speed equal to your walking speed. E okay. You have a climb speed as well. So, um, climb speed, 30 feet. So that means you don't have your, your speed when you are um, climbing, which sort of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, what else we got here? Uh, what's deck? Name is he? Stop trying to name the the creature. Let's just get the um the numbers in place. Itsy bitsy esper. Oh God! <laughs> and you, um, icy wincy, <laughs> incy wincy. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Itsy bitsy esper. Uh, wisdom dex. Strength. What's that? Strength. <laughs> Wisdom, deck, strength. Okay, look, I think what you've decided is, is you want wisdom. is going to be one. Next one is going to be dexterity, by the looks of it. The next one looks to be, it's going to be con. Kind of stupid not to do that. All right, okay. All right. I think we've just, yeah, from your, your comments, I think that's where we're going in that, that direction. Um, next, hashtag. Um, uh, what abilities, ability scores uh, get 11? 
So we've still got a few more to assign. Decide on that while I am filling in details. Uh, next. Spider, spidery movement. You can climb. Okay, here we go. This is what gets interesting. You can climb any surface that is not completely smooth, even upside down. Uh, without needing to make ability checks. Your spider legs perform the climbing action, which leaves your hands free. You also ignore any movement restrictions caused by webbing. All right. You don't know, it's all right, um, Nacho Nacho Man. It's all cool. It's all cool. Um, st intelligent strength. People definitely want the intelligence in there. It right, looks like it's going to be intelligent strength, which is fine. I don't mind. Um, so let's let's do this spidery climb. Spidery climb. And the page. Oh, did I did I write down the page? Page number is uh, eleven. Okay, eleven. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's um, let's assign that is intelligence. Intelligence and strength. So the last one will be charisma. Okay, cool. That's the 10. All right, so out of all of those... Okay, which one are we going to increase to um, by two? Because one of them is going to be increased by two. So our strength goes up by two. So it now comes out as a 13. Um, <clears throat> hashtag. What ability score increases by two? All right, <clears throat> I'm going to write the numbers in there so you can see them. Okay, I'll start putting them in now. And so the strength currently is a 13, uh, which is a plus 1. That's with the modifier. It's 11 and the 2, it's already been done. Uh, dex is 13. That's also a plus 1. Uh, constitution is a 13. So that'll be a plus 1. For the modifier and uh, intelligence is 11 it's a zero <coughs> our wisdom <coughs> sorry is a 13 and so that comes out as a plus one and then our um, charisma is a 10 so that's a plus zero plus zero okay so those are the numbers um plus two wisdom if there is a wisdom based spell caster yes there is a wisdom based spell caster wisdom or charisma so wisdom would be the one to go for right yep um increase decks you want to increase decks okay so we're probably not building a spell caster if cast um, um caster i agree with fred hubber okay so it's now wisdom back to wisdom okay uh con you want to go plus two con con all right, so <clears throat> I'm going to warn you now, you probably don't want to have a plus one, plus two's all right, but plus one, I mean, I'm, I mean, I said don't optimize or don't need to optimize, but you don't want to be too brutal about this whole thing. You might not, you might struggle to hit anything. <clears throat> um, Spirit Wolf, hello, how are you doing? Uh, 1966. <laughs> intelligence intelligence would relate to what okay we're going to go with the wisdom we're, we it looks like we're doing the spell casting one all right so that's a 15 now and that comes to a plus two okay all right so i think we've established what we're doing with that then now that i have that number i should be able to calculate my hit points for this character so we've got a plus one modifier for constitution so that is a one a one, a one, a one, a one. Uh, or we also have to worry about another increase uh, to our ability scores at level four. 
Probably should do that now. Should I not? Okay. Okay. So, um, hashtag. Hashtag. Uh, what ability scores scores or score do we increase at level four? We won't worry about a feat. Let's just do that. Okay, shaman. Yeah, it'll be some sort of. Sh it'll be a spellcaster of some kind. Um, so. I'll let you figure out that while I am working my way through this. So spidery movement, uh, bite. Your bite is a natural weapon with the finesse property. All the information for this is down in the description, people. Okay. Um, your bite is a natural weapon with a finesse property, which of course all animals should have finesse, uh, which you can use to make unarmed strikes. On a hit, your bite attack deals piercing damage equal to 1d6 plus your strength or dexterity modifier. Plus 1d6 poison damage. Ooh, that's nasty. So it's actually 2d6 plus your dex or your strength modifier for your bite. Okay, let's go here. Um, bite. And it's on page 11. And it is... Um, it's piercing and poison okay so let's do bite uh, the bonus for this is going to be strength oh, it doesn't matter they're the same so the proficiency bonus is a three uh, it's a plus four for our bite and we go with a 2d6 um, plus either our strength or dexterity modifier so it's a one Okay, so that's that's the bite already calculated. Um, or bard. No, we're not going bard. Forget the bard. Uh, plus one con, plus one intelligence. That's what Norok is suggesting. Uh, can we split wisdom and con? Yes, you can split. You can remember, you can, you can assign plus... Oh, no. No, you can't go split. Oh, no, you can. It's the level four ability, so you can split it. Yes, you can split it. You want to go wisdom con. I see. You want to you want to get your you want to get your spell casting ability modifier to a three. I see what you're going with this. I'm down for the wisdom instead of int. In okay. Up dex. Up dex. Con dex. Wisdom con. All right. I think the wisdom con um, group have won out. So wisdom and con are they going up? So let's go here. That's a 14, comes to a plus 2, and uh, Wisdom is going up, and that is a plus 3 now. So that changes things a little bit. Um, I need to change my number that I was adding. So it's a 2, a 2, not a 1 anymore, a 2 at each level. Okay, alright, so I'll do the hit points um, shortly. Uh, now I need to give you another task to do while I'm doing this. I'm going to drink a water. Oh, we can do our initiative. Initiative is going to be a plus one. I'll punch that in. It's the dexterity modifier that's over here, people. Um, our armor class right now I'm suspecting is just 11. But I, who knows, there's probably, there's probably some sort of... There's probably unarmed defense or unarmed... Um, unar is it? Unarmored defense. There's probably an unarmored defense ability in there somewhere. Okay, so I think the next thing I'm going to get you to do while I am working on the rest of this and typing stuff in is I'm going to get you to choose a background. So hashtag, hashtag, um, select a background. Did I do this? Background. Okay, actually we did this backwards. Should have selected classes, then assigned stats. Well, you, we kind of have. We kind of have already selected it. Um, so, I did sort of briefly go over it, didn't I? Did I not? I think I did. <laughs> I, I hope I did. Um, so, the Arachnia Broods. You have the Dreadfang, 
um, which is basically more ferocious arachnia. They uh, are suited for close combat and wield uh, most venomous bites of their kind. Okay, so you, you're basically a fanger. You like to bite. You're a, you're a biter. <laughs> okay. And then you got the Merkweaver, uh, Arachnia Society. Merkweavers possess a variety of wondrous talents. Um, they are master web spinners, elite scouts who transform into tiny spiders and summon <laughs> the, some, some, some really... St- okay, and then the, the one that we're probably going to be doing, which I believe is the Arachnia, um, is primarily a spellcaster of the Arachnia race, wielding powerful spider magic and casting spells that can assault foes, um, bluster allies and summon swarms of spiders you're still sw- you, you're summoning swarms of spiders still people okay so so arachnomancer arachno can I get that in there arachnomancer arach god oh it is that way okay arachnomancer what are they? It's over here now. Ah. Oh. Okay. Cut. Here. Paste. Okay. Rack no answer. Uh, that's on page. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. We'll get back to it. Oh, good lord! Backgrounds. You guys have already um gone gone uh, gone into that. Blowing that was fast. I wasn't expecting that. What do you got here? Um, it would be really fun if you, Esper, and the group played a one-shot with all of the crazy characters we have uh, created in the streams. Norik, we already did that. It's on Esper's channel. I played Vegemite, an ogre. Cave exploration. Outlander background. You want the outlander background? Cave exploration. I'm not sure what that means, Spirit Wolf. <laughs> Is there a background that called that? Acolyte. Or f- um, food runner for... An elder brain or something. Closter scholar. Okay. Dryder monk assassin. Jeez. Closter sc- um, um, scholar sounds like an interesting idea. <laughs> poison doesn't have to be teeth poisoned claws. Yes. Uh, one shot all these characters in a discord possibly. I don't think that's likely. When are I going to have time people? Do you, do you, I, I, I showed up for one of the one shots. And I'm not, but I won't be there for the second one. I just don't have time. And this is a, a, a wisdom-based cast, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, that would be really fun. Uh, it sounds like a heavy metal band. Yes, it does. And um, it's funny that you should mention heavy metal. We'll get back to that. <laughs> uh, okay. Kilt and roller blades on all legs. Really? Okay, so let's have a look here. Um, Closter, so somebody wants a scholar. Someone wants an acolyte. There's a few different ideas floating around here, I can see. So let's uh, let's narrow it down to something that's going to work. Because once we get the background, we can get you to start rolling dice again. Which is what I want to do, is get you rolling those dice. <laughs> so, backgrounds. Um, while I fill in all the other details, roller blades. Ten minutes to the top of the... I know, I know, I, I, I got it, Spiral. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so uh, an acolyte, could be an acolyte, and then you've got scholar, which I, I feel like is that kind of basically, um, where's the scholar? Saxophone? How do we get to saxophone? Outlander background? Cloistered scholar? Droid a monk assassin? So where is the cloister scholar? Because there's two of you who have said yes, cloister scholar. But I, I don't know where it is. You're going to have to help me. Where's the cloister scholar? Uh, is, it, is it in the player's handbook or is it in something else? Because I don't see it. Specialty crime. No, no, no. Uh, Fred knows he can keep us in the in line with rolling dice. That's right. Rollerblades. Okay. 
Sword Coast Adventurous Guide. Hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Acolyte it is. Um, sage would do fine. We'll just make it a sage. Cloistered scholar. Good lord. All right, okay. The Sword Coast Adventurous Guide. Do you really think that I bought that book? Uh, I did not. <laughs> it never happened, and it never will. <laughs> it never will. Okay, so you get Arcana and History. So we're going to just click on the Arcana and History. Since that's close enough to an, uh, a cloistered scholar, as far as I'm concerned. Two of your choice. Two languages. Hashtag. There we go. We'll get you to make some choices. Uh, pick two languages. There we go. That'll keep you busy. Um, and I can write down some of this other stuff here. Um, you can be a professor. How's that sound? Uh, what is this? This is on page 14. 14. 14. Bracket. Okay. Uh, can give stars, spider, go spider goblin. Is there, a, is there a language that's spider? I don't know, is there? <laughs> D does anybody know? Sage. You are a professor. How's that sound? I think that's close enough to what you were after. Professor. Professor. <laughs> Professor Spider. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so I think... Um, I think we've established, you guys have already decided what the Incy, Incy, Bitsy, Esper. There you go. Incy, Bitsy, Esper. Okay. Are you happy? <laughs> Poor Esper's getting it. Um, and he's not even here. <laughs> okay. Um, goblin, Deep Speech, Spider. Draconic. <laughs> Black speech. Is it black speech? Okay. Deep speech. Uh, and goblin. Okay. Whoops. How did that happen? Wrong one. That's why. Languages. All right, so you've selected some languages. I'm going to type in some, some gear in a second. But before I do that, I think it is time to get you... Durigan, Duriga, Durige, Durige, There's a few different ideas floating around in there. Okay, so let's get you rolling some dice, okay? I have already selected your specialty since there was so much... This clo cloistered scholar thing was your, your, your thing. I've decided I will put it down as just professor. I've already selected you to that one. But we're going to get you to roll personality traits. Hashtag. Hashtag. Roll um, a D8 for personality. Oh, personality traits. Okay. Devil speech. Uh, well, I think deep speech is, haven't we got that, isn't that close enough to what it is? Or have I made a mistake about that? I don't know. You'll tell me. Um, yes, there's there way too many things going on here. Okay, so we've got some people punching some numbers in. We've got our eight. We've got three of them already, so I can start entering some, some details. So I will. I'll come back to the other stuff because I'm just going to keep you guys busy. If I keep you busy, you can't mess with me too much. <laughs> okay, personality traits. The first one is from To Be. Hello, To Be. How are you? Uh, I, I think I've mostly got them under control today. I wouldn't say completely, but close to. I think that is just, I've just adjusted things again, haven't I? I have. Okay, but it's transitioned over, so it's bigger. Bigger and easier for me to see in for you. Okay, cool, cool. So, type it in. Uh, number six, personality trait. 
I speak slowly when talking to idiots. Okay, okay. <laughs> I speak slowly <laughs> to um, <laughs> to idiots. I think that's good enough. There we go. That's our first one. Our second one is coming in from Noroak, who rolled a two. You got a two. What is two? I've read every book in the world. Okay. Built the greatest libraries, or I'd like to boast that I have. Okay. So that's fine. I've read every book in the world. Sweet. That's two done. Now, roll me some D6, people. Hashtag. Hashtag. Roll a d6. Uh, roll a6. Six. six. Good lord. Six sided dice. All right. I need ideals, bonds, and flaws. You need to fill them in. Roll them dice, and I'll take those numbers. Six sided dice. Fast in the drawer um, to be. Yes, yeah, very quick. Fastest hand in the West. <laughs> Underdark and uh, is that Abyssal? <laughs> can mess with you and roll at the same time. I'm sure you can. Orange reverse Mohawk here. Really? Is that what? Okay. Orange. Mohawk. <laughs> that's that's all I'm doing. I'm doing it. If you're gonna put that in there, that's all I'm doing with that. Okay, we've got the numbers already. Oh my god, keeping up with you guys is just too hard. All these choices and, and decisions are going to be made so quickly. Okay, so um, ideals. You have num rolled number four to B. Got a four. What is a four? No limits. Uh, nothing should um, fetter the impossible, the infinite possibilities inherent in all existence. Chaotic. Okay, no limits. Um, okay. Nothing should fetter uh, the infinite... Pff, what? Where is it? Infinite possibilities. Inherent. Um, in all existence. All right, done it. Next, bond. What did we get for a bond? A spirit wolf rolled a four. There's a lot of fours being rolled today. Spirit wolf, what do you got here? Four is, my life's work is a series of tomes related to a specific field of law. Okay. My life's work is a series of tomes. Oh. Tomes related uh, to a specific uh, field of law. You decide what that is. You can tell me what that specific field of law is. I, I, I don't want to be a part of that, but you can do that. Uh, pink flowers, silk stockings. We're not giving it pink flowers and silk stockings. Okay. <laughs> Custom personality trait. I feel uncomfortable if I don't have spiders crawling on me. <laughs> sure. I feel uncomfortable. Oh dear. Uncom. Ah, oh, okay. Slow it down. Uncomfortable if I don't have spiders crawling over me. Okay. This is so sweet. Okay, that was good. Insects, of course. My life's felt as a series of times related to come on to 
uh, M6. And the allure. How's that sound? All right, like the floor. What is the floor? We haven't got the floor done. Uh, if have I got a five, what is five? Five is I speak without really thinking through my words, inevitably insulting others. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> okay. Um, I speak uh, without thinking through my words. Um, invariably insulting others. Okay, I got that down. All right, we got that nailed. <laughs> uh, now we must have 12, no, no tarantulas. Okay, so I've got, I've got the background stuff in. Uh, we need to start dealing with the class stuff, which thankfully we've got plenty of time, but I, I know if I don't keep you guys busy, you're going to get up to mischief. So I'm going to give you a task. So here's your task. Your level five, hashtag, level five, uh, pick some adventuring. Venturing gear. Right, that'll hopefully keep you busy long enough for me to finish typing in the last of the little bits and pieces that I'm supposed to. So we've got, a, we've got 10 gold pieces. Don't worry about the money value, people. Just like for a level 5 character, you, all, all I could, don't say magic items, okay? <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so we've got a uh, bottle of ink. Uh, black ink. This is from your background. Uh, what else have we got here? A quill. Uh, what else? A small knife. A small knife. Okay. Uh, what else? Small knife. A letter. Okay. Letter. Um, letter from colleague, colleague, I uh, believe that, no, not quite, it's close though, Fred, colleague, there, that'll do fine, colleague, uh, uh, a set of common clothes, common clothes, no, you're not going to have common clothes, uh, pouch, you've got a pouch, so I've done that bit. I just need to write down your sage feature, which is researcher. Professor, and that is researcher. It is page uh, 138 of the player's handbook. I know that this is going to get completely out of hand right now um, in terms of the stuff that goes down. I won't even be able to keep up with that. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me see. I was working my way through the racial stuff, which I haven't finished. And it's top of the hour too. Top of the hour. All right. You guys think keep thinking about your equipment. When I get back, we, I'm going to plaster in or um, whack in all of the, the the information about the arachnia in general so it's racial stuff we have to finish uh, what languages we've got arachnia and common so that's spider language there you go we know what they are Arach, arachnia common Deep speech and goblin. There you go. So we got a bunch of languages. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to take five minutes or less. Be back, and we will roast through the rest of this. We're doing pretty well.
Right, so here we go. Coming back in. Oh, uh, oh my gosh, there is a lot of stuff in here. Seriously, you want a dwarf maiden? <laughs> Jeez, a dwarf maiden. Let me guess, a pickled dwarf maiden. Is that where, is that where we're going now? A pickled dwarf maiden? Okay, so. Uh, okay, so. You guys have written down a whole bunch of stuff, which is great. I'll put it in. Okay, I will put it in. But I'm going to give you a new, new choice. So we need to... We're running out of choices. So I'm going to get you to do some more choice making. I believe uh, we're going to get you to pick some skills for this um, this class. So this class consists of... I need to do the hit points as well. Where are the class skills? Here we go. Here we go. Class skills. So... You get to pick two skills. You get acrobatics, athletics, deception, intimidation, perception, stealth, and survival. Which one out of those two do you want? Hashtag. Rollerblades. Good lord, here we go. Hashtag. Uh, pick two skills. Okay. Pick two skills. I'll say them again. Acrobatics, athletics, deception, intimidation, perception, stealth, survival. Okay, we already have, if you are unsure, we already have history, okay, and we already have um, um, arcana, so you don't need to worry about those. All right, and I will punch in your, your various things. Going backwards. Um, <laughs> Taylor and the die. Die. Tall harness. Tall harness. Where did the die? Tall harness. Yeah. Okay. Um. A pair of hand crossbows and a top hat. A top hat. Um. Two times. Hand cross bow. Righty ho. Um, hand cross bow. Socks. It's colored socks, right? Coloured socks. There you go. Coloured socks. Sheesh. Um, a jug of spider poison. Oh, good lord. <laughs> um, a dwarf maiden. Um, a jug. A jar. Don't know what the jar's for. I hate to think. A letter from a dead unknown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so now now we're getting into no no bags of holding full of spiders um saddle bags saddle bag <laughs> I, someone's writing it okay flower what else Fred here uh peanut oil what <laughs> you guys are ay 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 um fire starter kit flint and steel oh is that right is that hard yeah I think that is flint and steel um okay large yeah, they're making stuff up here dungeons and chronics <laughs> most of this stuff is not in the player's handbook okay um a sack. Spiders. You can have a sack of spiders. How's that? Um, okay, four roll blades. Okay. Roll blades. Uh, I hate to think. Sword of spiders and some. What the heck? A sword. 
Okay, you can have a sword. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a look at these skills there. He has selected something here. Athletics, survival, perception. Well, okay. Um, stealth. Um, acrobatics, perception. Glow-in-the-dark tattoos. Um, monocle, mirrors, sunglasses. <laughs> All right, happy. It's getting smaller. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. Focus. Perception came at once, twice. Perception. So you can have perception because it's on the list. Okay. Perception is an option. So we'll have perception. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perception. Done. Next one. Athletic, survival, stealth. Acrobatics. We're all over the place. People aren't responding to the right things. A weaving needle. Um, see, see, <laughs> okay. Sword. You're probably not even proficient with the sword, I suspect. Um, survival stealth. I'll give you the stealth. How's that? You can have that one. You're a spider. You probably should be stealthy. Okay, so that's all of them. Um, is there another thing I can get you to do? Um, you guys, you got to stop with the equipment. Okay, we, we, we can't keep going. And we've got to actually get the other stuff done. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so let me just have a look here. And I can fill in some of the information that I have done so far. Bite, dark vision, 120 feet. You have superior vision in dark and dim conditions. You can see in dim light within 120 feet of you if you were in blind. Okay, so that's 120 feet of um, a dark vision. That's, that's pretty obvious. Dark vision, 120 feet. Page 11, I believe. 11. Okay, next one. Languages. We did the languages. Uh, the Rachnia's tongue alter alternates between low and high pitches and is interspersed with clicks and chitters. Mm. Oh. We do have unarmored defense. Ah, uh, you're so lucky, people. We get to add your... Um, so we'll be doing that in a second. All right, let's get the hit points sorted out because I can calculate that now. Whereas I couldn't do it before. So that comes to 8 and 2 is 10. 5 and 2 is 7. Is 7, yes. Um, 4 and 2 is 6. 7 and 2 is 9. 4 and 2 is 6. Add that all up. Comes out at um, 15, 17, 18, 19. 32, 38, 38 hit points, uh, 38 hit points, not a lot, your hit dice are 5, 5 times 1d8 plus your con modifier which is 2, done it, okay. <laughs> Heartburn, course, 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 course. Um, is there a choice we can get you to make? No, we're, we're not even going to go there. Uh, so light armor, simple weapons and martial weapons, no tools, and you get your dex and strength as a saving throw. Dex and strength. Okay, so strength is a three, that'll be one and three is four. Okay, next is dex is the same. And then the constitution is a 2. Because there's nothing to add to it. Intelligence is a 0. Wisdom, charisma, uh, so wisdom is a 3. And charisma is the 0. 
Okay, all right, so we've got them in. Um, I'll do the numbers later, I think, the rest of those numbers, I can just move on. Next. Light armor, okay, so I just need to add that in to the character sheet to get light armor. Light armor. Um, simple and martial weapons. Is that, is that right? Yep, it is. Um, anything else that I need to add here? Ah. Oh. I think that's that. Okay, yes. Done that, done that, done this. No tools. Arachnia blood. Uh, choose an arachnia brood, which increases uh, your role and specialization among the other kinds. Dreadfang, the muckweaver, and the uh, arachnomancer. Okay, so we've done that. So you get that at level one, not level three. If the broods are detailed. Okay. Arachnia brood. Um, sage. Darn it. Come here. Cut. Paste. And background. Okay, Sage Research, okay, that's that. Um, a rack. Yeah, brood. I had it up here, didn't I? I had it here somewhere. Arachnomancer. Ah, uh, what else? Um, unarmored Defense. So that is 10 plus your Dexterity plus your Constitution Modifier. While you're not wearing any armor, your armor class is equal to that. Okay. If you later gain proficiency with shields, you can use a shield, but you can't right now. So, okay, let's do the armor class. Um, so, unarmored defense. Is that right? What is it? Is it called anything special? Toughened skin. Okay. Toughened skin. Uh, page. Was it 11 or 14? I can't remember. It's 11. Okay. 11 and 14. Eleven. Got it. All right. Next. Um, Dex con at three and ten comes out as a thirteen. So it's not high, but it's it's better than nothing. <laughs> we didn't get high numbers on on our on our um, rolling. Um, so nothing was super super high. Okay. So that means we get that done. Web shoot at level two. A web shoot. Okay. So how does this work? Uh, you can shoot sticky webs from your abdomen um, spinner. This is a natural weapon that you can, you are proficient with. Well, thank God for that. As an action, make a ranged attack with a 30 foot to 60 foot range. On a hit, a huge or small um, target is restrained by the web. As an action, okay. You can get hit, hit something that's quite large. As an action, a restrained creature can make a strength check, um, strength check, Escaping the web on a success. The restrained effect also ends if the web is destroyed. The AC is 10, uh, 5 hit points, vulnerable to fire damage, immunity to bludgeoning, poisoning, and psychic damage. Oh dear. Uh, the DC to escape the web is 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your dex modifier. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. You regain the expended use when you finish a long rest. So let's get web, um, shoot web in. Shoot whip. Whoops. 
shoot whip. Uh, pretty sure that was page 11, but uh, go back and check. Yeah, okay, 11. All right, so shoot web needs to be in here as well. Because you're probably going to use it a bit. Um, now shooting the web is not an attack roll, is it? So it's probably not going to live there. So we'll cut it here. I put it here. And I paste it there. Shoot web. So that's 30 slash 60 feet. Uh, what else is there? What other information do I need to put across? Um, you may make an arranged attack. Okay, so we're making a ranged attack. Proficient. It do, does it state if I use, okay. Do I use dexterity or do I use strength to make the attack? Does it state that? Because there's actually an attack you make. This is a natural weapon you're proficient. As an action, make an, a, a ranged attack with a... Well, I'm assuming it is, it is, it's probably one matter with our spider here in this case. Shoot web. It's probably three plus either strength or dex, and they're both for one. So I don't. Know, I'm assuming it would be dexterity, but you never know. There's no damage. That's just a hit. And then what else have we got here? The escape DC is dex proficiency and eight. Okay, so. Okay, so this is. Um, DC 8, proficiency, that's 11, and dex, and strength. Wasn't it strength? Strength, strength, strength. No, it is. It's dex. It's dex. Okay, so it's dex. It's 1, 3, 2, 8. It'll be 12. It won't be high. Okay, so that's our DC. DC 12 to escape. Okay. Um, so a strength DC 12. Okay. okay, so I got that down. Sweet. Nice. Uh, next, we've done the ability score improvement already at level 4. Level 4, we also get agile landing. Um, you have become practiced with, enough with landing from jumps and falls that you can Mitigate the for, um, force of impact. You ignore the first 30 feet of falling as long as you are not incapacitated. So agile landing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry about the, um, the, the character sheet doing this. Uh, page... 11. It just keeps scrolling it down automatically and I just can't, I don't have control. That's 12, sorry. Page 12. Okay. Uh, next, blind sight. So you get blind sight at level 5. You gain blind sight out to 20 feet within this range you can perceive effectively regardless of any visual obs um, obs obscurement. Such as blindness, darkness, or invisibility. Ooh, -hoo. cover still functions normally. So blind sight, twelve. Pretty cool. Blind sight. Hash uh, page. Is it actually going there? Yeah, page twelve. Okay, so that's the blind sight thing, which is. Driving me nuts doing that, but anyway. Um, next, we get multi attack at level five. Well, that's good news. Um, you have learned how to better coordinate your attacks. As an action, you can make two attacks. Only one of these attacks can be shoot web. Okay, so that's fine. That's all right. Okay, multi attack. And that is on page 12, too, I think. 
just to see if it actually yeah you know, I can't see where it's what it's typing in there okay so we don't have magical attacks we're not level six uh, versatile is um, level six supernatural venom is level nine and arachne flurry is level 11 okay all right so we've got all of those things in so now I need to get the actual class feature stuff in which we haven't actually kind of looked at that much <laughs> um, voice throwing red and white stable hunting <laughs> What is the range of um, spider silk strands? I have no idea. Well, it seems to be 60 feet. <laughs> I think that's what we can, we can establish. That's that's where it's supposed to be. I believe I've got all the bits and pieces in there I'm supposed to. Oh, you can have an explorer's pack or an ex, um, a, a dungeoneer's pack. What do you guys want? Explorer's pack, dungeoneer's pack. Oh, you got 25 gold worth of equipment. Oh, you got 25. Oh, you got quite a bit of money as well. So I'll just give you the money. 35 instead instead of 10 25 and 10 is 35 there you go you got a bit of money um now do not drive me nuts um you stupid thing all right so this is scroll down to i find the arachnir mancer arachnir mancer where are you here we go level one spectral spectral Spiderling. As a bonus action, you can magically conjure a small spectral spider on an unoccupied surface you can see within 60 feet of you. It lasts until you use this feature again or dismiss it as a bonus action. You can attack with your bite through the spider, though you cannot make opportunity attacks through it. The spider is a magical effect, not a creature. Oh dear. Uh, how do you get rid of it though? What if somebody attacks it? It looks like it's n nothing would happen. It's a spectral spiderling. Oh my gosh. Can you see through it? You're going to have to spell a lot more out, Esper, because I know what people would do is they make a spectral spider and use it as like a little spy. Um, spectral spiderling. Uh, I don't remember what page it was on. <laughs> it was on page 14. Okay, thank God. All right, 14. 14. That's the uh, the first feature at level 1 for that brood. Okay, we get spell casting. Level 3. You learn a number of spells. Explosive pack. <laughs> sure, sure. You want to blow yourself up. I have no problems. Um, you learn a number of spells through magical traditions and innate power. <laughs> um, cantrips. At third level, you know three cantrips. One of the cantrips is Razor Web or Vexing Vermin. Which one do you want, people? Um, pick a cantrip. And the choices are razor web don't ask me what razor web is i have no or uh vexing them i have n i have no idea what they are okay people but that's that's what i know so far okay so we've got some cantrips that we're supposed to have <clears throat> so that's one two three okay so we need them uh what else is there spell so spells known level five we get three cantrips we get spells known four and we get three spell slots three spell slots and one two three four one two three four okay just need to fill them in uh vermin uh, poison spray, cantrip, dancing vermin, uh, vexing vermin sounds good. Ve vexing vermin, it's uh, okay. It's it's a. <laughs> that's what we're gonna get. Uh, vexing vermin. You get vexing vermin. Okay, right. You get two more cantrips. Poison spray, cantrip. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. Mm, hashtag. Um, pick. 
two more cantrips. Did it say where I have to pick the cantrips from? I don't think it did. I'm pretty sure it didn't state. Choose the other two cantrips from the sor oh, Sorcerer or Warlock spell lists. <coughs> At 10th level, these choose another cantrip in this way. So yeah, you get Sorcerer or Warlock um, cantrips, people. So throw them throw them out there and uh, and let me let me know. Mending. Mending is probably one. Uh, let's just find that page. Where is the page? Mending, I think it's Sorcerer, isn't it? Mending, yeah, you can have Mending. Fine, done. That was easy. And Acid Arrow is not a cantrip. Okay, Acid Arrow is a spell. Uh, but here, okay. Acid Arrow Warlock. Is it Warlock? Acid Arrow is not a Warlock or a Sorcerer spell unless I'm looking in the wrong book. <clears throat> so, the, yeah. So, Mending, we got one more cantrip to select. Hashtag. Pick. Four. Level. One spells. Sorcerer. and warlock list okay mage hand done thank you no oh, it's not going to do that as well is it mage hand so annoying so annoying when it does that uh magic hand mage hand Grease, push into web. What is push into web? I have no idea what that is. Grease though, I know what grease is. I think grease is an option. Is it, is it, is it? G, 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 grease, no. Warlock, level one, grease. Do I have to read out the level one spells? Here we go. Sorcerer, burning hands, charm person, chromatic orb, color spray, uh, comprehend languages, detect magic, disguise self, exp expeditious retreat, false life, feather fall, fog cloud, jump, mage armor, magic missile, ray of sickness, shield, uh, silent image, sleep, thunder wave, witch bolt, and now the warlock is armor of Agathus, arms of Hadar, charm person, comprehend languages, expeditious retreat, hellish rebuke, hex, Illusionary script, protection from evil and good, unseen servant, and witch bolt. Catapult. What are we talking about here? Catapult? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. So webcaster. Once per long rest, you can cast web without expending a spell slot. If you have a second level sl um, spell slot, you can also cast the spell normally. Okay. So there's something going on here. So webcaster, third level. Webcaster. Come on. Webcaster. Uh, cast web. All right, so we've got web. Seems appropriate. And the page is page 14. 14. Okay. Witch Bolt. Okay. Grease. Um, Witch Bolt. Witch Bolt. Charm Person. Okay. So let's, that's highlighted the one that you guys are after. I can get those down easy. Witch Bolt. And <clears throat> charm person, disguise self. I don't believe disguise self was when I read out. It's not on the sorcerer list. Oh no, it is. It is disguise self. 
Holy Toledo. That is terrifying. Whose idea was that? Uh, Dungeons and Chronics. <laughs> Noroak and Spirit Wolf have got me the other ones. Uh, first little transmutation spell. Cast. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'm going to ignore that one. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that one. <laughs> Pick something else. Pick something else. Disguise. Disguise. I'm ignoring it primarily not because I don't think anything in that particular book is worth using. It's just ease of use. Grease, I don't believe, is an option for any of them. They're not on the lists. So, yeah, so we've got one more spell to select um, out of those, and uh, I want to keep moving myself forward with the next thing. So we did the um, the webcaster, and next, what's after webcaster? We don't get anything else after webcaster, because then it's Whispers of the Crawling, level 7, once per long rest you can cast... Crawling Infiltrators, without expending a spell slot, if you have a third level spell slot, you can also cast a spell normally. Arcane Spiderlings, you can cast spells with a range of touch through your Spectral Spiderling. Okay, alright. So that's all of the um, the the Arachnomancer's abilities. And there is the Hunting Spider. And the Hunting Spider stat block is there for obviously some sort of reason. Um... I would read out all of, I, I mean, I will go over the other sp spider um, subclasses, arachnia subclasses. I will go over them, but I think what I'll do is I want to, I want to chuck in all of the maths for this right now. So this should be a plus, plus four to hit. Uh, what's the... Is this a long sword? It probably is. Long sword. So a long sword is uh, 1d8. 1d8. Plus our modifier, which was going to be a plus 1 in this case. Yes, it is. Okay. So we've got that. We've got that. Don't need the temporary hit points. I've done this bit. I've filled all that. I need to do this. I haven't filled in all this stuff. Dex is a plus one for acrobatics. Plus one. Animal handling is wisdom. It's plus three. Uh, uh, okay, so we've got zero. Plus three, so that's a three. For our arcana. Athletics is just strength, and strength is just a plus one, isn't it? Plus one. Uh, charisma is zero. So that'll be deception is zero. History is intelligence and proficiency. So that's a plus three. Uh, insight is wisdom. So that's plus three. Uh, charisma is zero for intimidation. Uh, investigation is another zero for it's intelligence. So we're not very good at that. Medicine is wisdom. So it's a plus three. Nature is another zero because we've got nothing on that one and then uh, we're proficient with wisdom so that's three and three is six proficiency three wisdom's three so we got it okay charisma zero again another zero for that one okay uh religion is intelligence so that's zero and uh sleight of hand dexterity is plus one isn't it Pretty sure it is. Do we have it? Uh, no, we don't have it as a trained skill, so it's not going to be higher. And then our stealth is a plus one, and we get a three for our proficiency. That's a four. Four. Wisdom is a three. Nothing else. Okay. So that's our survival done. Okay, so means our passive perception comes out at a mighty 16. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, did we get a final call on our our spells? Our, our last spell. Magic hand. Unseen servant. Unseen servant is. Unseen servant. Okay. 
I'm pretty sure Unseen Servant is the one of those spells that I had called out. It is. Unseen Servant. Thank you so much. Spirit Wolf, we have we have nailed it down. Unseen Servant. That is our next spell. Okay. So I think I've covered all of these things. I have about less than 20 minutes to go. Um, so what I'm going to do, those of you who are here, I'll open the package. Okay, how's that? I'll open the package. And then I'll go back and I'll go over the other um, different features. But that's our Spidomancer or Arachnomancer built. It's there. It's done. It's got all its bits and pieces. Player name. I don't know. Crazy people. Crazy people. Crazy people. That's 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 who's playing it. Crazy people. Uh, we won't worry about the alignment. Okay, so jumping back to my screen, which means I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of a jostle around. Um, just bear with me as I move books because there's books everywhere. You won't be able to see nothing. Um, yeah, let's go back to my face. I will open the package. Where is this thing? Put that over there. Okay, and I move the dice out of the way. Where's the package? There it is. Ugh. Do I have something to open it with? It's in my drawer. Oh, look, there's a knife. Oh, uh, how, how helpful. <laughs> how, how kind. Yeah, fireworks. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at the package. This is the package. Somebody's going to tell me, yeah, let's read it's got your address on it. Uh, yeah, it does. That's right, it does. Do you want me to cross it out? It's probably too late now. <laughs> All right, so let's just open this thing. That's that one. Come here. Come here. Come on. All right, don't come off. I'll be careful I don't cut, cut into it and, and wind up destroying what's in there. That's along this side. Okay. Okay, we're doing all right. It's coming open. Oh, let's have a look here. I'm opening the package. Someone's made sure that it's not going to get destroyed. Okay, there's a box within a box. All right. New box, old box, out of the way. Uh, so, what is this critical machine? Automatic dice roller. ADR, USB gaming pad, United Kingdom. Oh, oh, okay. That's for that guy that said, okay. So somebody sent me this and they said, would you be interested in one of these? And I said, I don't really know that there's much point in getting one of these things. Because I don't know why you would need to use one. Because people like rolling dice. But he said, no, 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 no. You, you do want to have one of these things. And I said, okay, well, I'll have a look at it and I'll think about it, right? Critical machines. Um, and I said, if, if, I, if I like the look of this thing, then it's got little buttons on it too, and a cable. If I like this thing, I'll use it in my, um, my game mechanics uh, live streams. And he said, okay, that sounds good to me. Sweet. So pull this off, pull this out. Do I have to plug it in? Ugh, I don't think I'm going to be able to plug it in. Okay. So we'll just... Turning it on and all that sort of stuff is probably not going to be a, a thing. So this is... Um, who sent this to me? Can I even remember who sent this to me? Do, do, I, do I have the name of the guy? Where are you? It'll be there in here somewhere. No, no, no. That's not you. That's not you. Um, no, that's not flutes. Uh, no, it's Connor, sheesh, this was a little while ago, uh, no, reviewing dice, um, okay, there, there is, there is no way I'm going to find this email for this guy. All right, whoever they are, I'll have to look it up some other time because I don't know where they are. So so you've got a button 
for pressing for a D2, is that right? D4, D6, D8, D10, D12, D20, the percentile dice, up and down, clear, advantage, disadvantage. So your button for advantage and disadvantage. I don't know what that does. And a little readout. Well, I have to plug it in at some point and find out what it does. Um, but right now, I'm not <laughs> going to do that. Okay, I open the box. So, yes. Don't ch check for traps. Is it all switch go this way? Oh, this way. Okay, so there's T1, T2, and in total. This is just going to confuse me. I can see it now. It's going to be one of those things where I just get confused. Okay, let, let's have a look at the uh, at what we were doing before, which is if I can just find my my mouse. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, let's go back to where we were and have a look at this other stuff that um, Esper has put together for us. Let's let's see where is it? No, yeah, there we go. Arachnomancer. Back to the Arachnomancer. Hello, Arachnomancer. How are you? Let's have a look at what you've got here. Some of these features. Right, so we've done the edge roll. I've already read all this other stuff out here. So where this is uh, this is all done. At level, so versatility, further levels you gain, you can gain either, you gain, can either be an Arachne or another class. What? Further levels you gain can either be an Arachne or another class. Oh, so you can multi-class at level six with this okay that's that's his okay magical attacks your natural weapons are magical and therefore um, overcome resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks this benefit extends to any spiders you magically summon oh good lord okay supernatural venom poison damage you deal ignores resistance and immunity along with this you ignore creatures immunity to the poison condition this benefit extends to any spiders you magically summon more okay all right <laughs> I don't know what the T1 or the T2 is, um, um, Spirit Wolf. I really have no idea. There's no instruction book. Uh, I'm going to have to figure it out the hard way. Um, Arachnia Fury, um, Flurry at level 11. Uh, you learn how to string together a combination of mobile attacks. As a bonus action, you can move up to your speed without provoking an opportunity attack. You can make four attacks at any point throughout the movement. Up to two of these attacks can be web shoot, okay, or shoot web. Once you use this feature, you must finish a short or long rest to regain it. Okay, cool, cool. Right, so the broods. I didn't read out the dread fang stuff, so let's have a look at the dread fang. I need water in me first before I do that. And I should be going. I should be on my on my bike, but I won't. We'll read it out. Kiteness Warrior, level one. Dread fangs are among the hardest of arachnids. Your AC increases by one. You have resistance to poison damage and you gain advantage on saving throws against poison. Well, sounds sensible. I don't know why you're not immune to poison, frankly, but anyway. You have a sly springing maneuver that enhances your skirmishing combat style. As a bonus action, you can move up to 10 feet without pro attack, provoking attacks of opportunity. This movement can be walking, climbing, or jumping. Lovely. Okay, empowering venom, level three. What have you got? Uh, when you hit a creature with a bite, you can deliver a more powerful dose of venom. The bite deals an additional 2d8 poison damage, and the target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be poisoned for one minute. An affected target repeats the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. The DC for the empowering venom is 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your constitution modifier. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all expended uses on the long rest. So, stinging bristles. I feel like this is something that we were talking about before. Like, is that the, the, the bristles on a tarantula? Your abdomen is covered in... This is level 7. Uh, your abdomen is covered in minuscule toxic bristles that you can project either by kicking them out or shooting them. Oh, good lord. As an action, you can project the bristles in a 30-foot cone. Each of the each creature in this area must make a constitution saving throw. Yeah. On a six, uh, on a failed save, a creature takes 1d6 poison uh, piercing damage per 
two arachnia levels. Oh, good Lord. And you have, and is poisoned for one minute. If a creature fails the saving throw by five or more, it is blinded as long as it is poisoned. An affected creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turn, ending the effect on itself on a success. A creature that succeeds on its initial saving throw takes half damage and is not poisoned. Okay, all right, so it's still going to work, even if they save. The DC for the Stinging Bristles is 8 plus your proficiency bonus and your dex modifier. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and you get it back on the long rest. So, Paralytic Toxin at level 10. Sounds really bad. When a creature fails at saving throw against your empowering venom, it is paralyzed for as long as it is poisoned. Lovely. Sounds good to me. Uh, so, the next one here is the Muckweaver. In Arachnia Society, Muckweavers possess a variety of wondrous talents. These are Master Web Spinners. So, okay. Do tiny, tiny spiders and summoning. Okay, here we go. Gossamer. So this is level one. Noroak, thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Ten minutes. Yes, I'm aware. It's been a wonderful chaotic. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I tried really hard to keep you guys as busy as I possibly could the whole time. I tell you, man, it's hard work. <laughs> it's hard work. Anyway, M Merc Weaver, the Gossamer, you carry with you a Gossamer segment that is... Highly versatile. It functions it functions a whip and a sling. Weapon. Okay, it functions like a whip and a sling, I guess. It also functions as a 30-foot strand of silk rope and can hold up to 700 pounds. Okay. Aside from the normal function of these items, you can use the segment in one of the following ways as a bonus action. Make a whip or a sling weapon attack. Okay, you can use it as a whip or a sling. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well. Okay, attach the rope strand to a surface or object you can see within 60 feet of you and sh shooting it if it if need be. Okay, it adheres until removed as a bonus action. An object must be unattained or in the possession of a willing creature. Okay, so that's interesting. You can have only one gossamer segment its armor class is equal to what? What is it equal to? Oh, to your armor class. And it has 20 hit points, vulnerable to fire, immunity to bludgeoning, poisoning, and psychic. Um, if you lose contact with it for 24 hours, it becomes a dry cobweb that rots to uselessness. You can replace your gossamer segment um, by finishing a long rest. Okay. Web mastery at level 3. There are none so masterful in the art of web spinning as the Merc Weaver. Okay, the range of your web, your shoot web, increases to 60 feet, uh, which is your normal range, to 120 feet long range or extreme range, and the web's hit points increases by to 10. All right, so hit points go up. Um, as a bonus action, you can engage in a strength athletics contest with a creature restrained by your web within 60 feet of you. You, if you win the contest, you pull the creature up to 20 feet closer to you. All right, so you're going to pull them in and then you're going to feed on them. And that's what's going to happen. There's a lot here to talk about. Oh, there's a lot to read out too. There's a, there's a lot going on here. Uh, here we go. So, Spider Shifter Level 7. As an action, you can magically transform into a spider... That is approximately 4 inches in diameter. Your statistics remain the same with the following exceptions. This is what the um, the droid wants, right? Um, your size is tiny. You can squeeze through openings as narrow as one, half an inch wide. Oh dear. The only attack you can make is your bite. Um, you only deal one piercing damage with it through the poison, though the poison damage is unchanged. Okay. Uh, you cannot cast spells. Oh god. Um, you cannot speak or perform any action that is that a tiny spider is incapable of. Attack rolls made against you by medium and large creatures have disadvantage. When you transform, your equipment melds into your new form, and you can cannot use um, use or otherwise benefit from any any of it. Okay, all right. This transformation lasts a number of hours equal to your half your arachnia level, though you can end it early as a bonus action. 
you also revert to your normal form if you drop to zero hit points or die. Once you transform into a tiny spider, you must finish a long rest or short rest to regain this feature. All right. Bloodcaller, level 10. This muckweaver has um, got a bit going on. As an action, you can magically summon a hunting spider in an unoccupied space you can see within 60 feet of you. Use the stat block below. It is your ally, and it, take, it takes its turn immediately after your initiative. It... Uh, it obeys your spoken commands, and if you give it no commands, it defends itself through, though otherwise does nothing else. Okay. The hunting spider disappears after one hour, if reduced to zero hit points, or if you dismiss it as a bonus action. After you use this feature, you must finish a long rest to regain it. Okay. Blood we am caller. That's that one. And then I believe we're into the arachnomancer, which I did. I read out everything apart from the higher level features. Did I not? I'm pretty sure I did. So Whispers of the Crawling Ones, level 7. This is the uh, Arachnomancer that we built. Once per long rest, you can cast Crawling Infiltrators without expending a spell slot. If you have third level spells, you can use the... Okay, all right. So Crawling Infiltrators. MH. MH. What is MH? I, uh, okay. So Arcane Spiderling. Level 10, you can cast spells through the range. I, I, I did, I read these out. I did read these out. Yeah, it's all there. It's done. I've done it. I've, I've finished it. Oh, okay. Check the check down in the description, people. If you want to find out a lot more about um, Esper's um, Kickstarter and the uh, the preview, that's the place to go because uh, that's where you'll find it. And blimey, blimey, blimey. Time has been fun. It is definitely over. I am out of time. Uh, in many respects, <laughs> I don't know how I get through these sometimes. I honestly have no idea. But it's done. Let's end this poll. And it seems to me that like 44% of the 18 votes, yes, they want to play a spider person. Um, just watching, undecided, 5%. No, 33%. No problems, no problems. It's all good. Okay, I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons on uh, Patreon. You really, you make the difference between whether this happens or doesn't happen. Uh, I want to thank Esper for providing me with the opportunity to do this. That was always very nice of him. And uh, you can access it, as I said, down in the description. All the previews are down there. Okay, I believe the Kickstarter is finishing shortly. If you're really that interested in going a bit further into this, then that's the place to go. And uh, yeah, there should be links to get to there in the description. Um, so thank you to everybody who took part in the poll today. I watched the live stream, took part and rolled dice and chatted with me and distracted me or um, provided useful or um, weird information that was not so helpful. <laughs> thank you for being a part of it. It does help. Uh, so wherever you are in the world, you know the story, man. Uh, whether it's the morning, the afternoon, or the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself and your family, okay? And uh, if you've got neighbours, be nice to them. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s, and I'll be back. Oh my god. Okay, well, that's good.